Welcome to the Notre Dame Anti-Dynasty, the first ever Anti-Dynasty, where I rebuild Notre Dame, but I'm playing against them in the actual gameplay. That's right. I'm taking over the Fighting Irish, and I'm going to build them into a powerhouse, but I'm going to be actively playing against them the entire time. Now, this will be, since I don't like Notre Dame, a shorter dynasty. Hopefully they can just end the suffering, but whether I win or lose, there will be advantages because we will start at default sliders, 50s all the way for both the user and the CPU. However, there are changes to that. If Notre Dame loses at home, they will gain sliders. But if they lose on the road, then the opponent will go down in sliders, specifically 10. This right here is just a sample. Neutral sites could be either one. It'll be determined at random. The ones that go up will be at random. In addition, there are special achievements for extra terrible accomplishments. Losing to an FCS school will have me going into an editor and rigging all the recruiting. Being top 10 and then losing to an unranked by more than 25 will result in me not doing anything on defense whatsoever. Losing the championship game, I will go into an editor and I will give every single player an extra year of eligibility. Whether they take it or not is up to them. If you end the season with five or fewer wins, I am restricted to coach recommendation play calling. And if I end the season winless, I have to force a safety when I get the ball to start the half. Meaning that Notre Dame will always get the They'll always get two points as a handicap, plus they get the ball to start both halves effectively. If I were to fail, if somehow I didn't get safety and then they forced a fumble and recovered it in the end zone for a touchdown, that does not count, meaning that they would both get that touchdown plus a forced safety on the next possession. That one could be especially big, but only if ending the season with zero wins. In addition to that, giving up 100 points in a game will result in all the user offense sliders going to zero. And if Notre Dame gets zero first downs in a game, all CPU offense sliders will go up to 100. If Notre Dame blows a 17 plus point lead and they lose the game, then one CPU defense slider of choice goes up to 100. If Notre Dame gets shut out, one user defense slider of choice goes down to zero. If Notre Dame manages to give up seven or more field goals in a game, all user kicking sliders will go down to zero. And if Notre Dame manages to miss four or more field goals in a game, all CPU kicking sliders will go up to 100. These are all pretty hard to get, especially considering that uh, it's a six minute quarter. Not super long games. Getting shut out is probably the most likely of any of these. And a 17 point lead would probably be a good first quarter for Notre Dame and then absolutely just blowing it for the rest. As for schedule, for year one, we're gonna start with the default schedule that the game has given. This is with realigned conferences. And we'll just go through this and we'll see how this one ends. As for the championship, the dynasty will end after Notre Dame wins a championship but how they get there will be determined on what year the game says it is. So year one, it says it's 2013. We will go by the BCS system for that. For 2014, all the way through 2023, 2024, will be a 14 playoff if Notre Dame qualifies. Oh, and by the way, Notre Dame, regardless of schedule strength, will be treated as if they have an A-plus schedule. As for recruiting, before the first game, looking at this, already have five very solid players. And without further ado, let's finally get into some gameplay. Ah, Notre Dame. The team that the NCAA simps for. There's an actual Notre Dame clause in the BCS code saying that if they're top eight, then they will automatically get a BCS bowl. Granted, any team in the top eight should have gotten a BCS bowl, but the fact that Notre Dame was in there is particularly striking and for that reason that's one of the reasons that i hate them i'm gonna have fun on this one game one temple owl starting off with warner on a play action he's going to lob and somehow somehow finds jose barbone for 20 yards but will temple do anything 
The answer really is no, as they take a massive sack, and that will end their first drive. So Notre Dame, they get the ball back, and Drew Pine is going to land this dot right there to Matt Salerno. Notre Dame Fighting Irish guy is very happy. Going to see a lot of him in this dynasty. They don't do anything. Up next, Temple, next drive. Hubbard manages to get a really good chunk. And now driving farther down the field, Warner is going to roll out here with some rollout cheese. And he's going to take off with it instead of throwing. Goes out of bounds near the end of the first. Still nothing going on. And that will end the first. Hand off to Sadie to start off the second quarter on fourth down, mind you. But on third down and goal, could Temple get in? No, Sadie is stopped short. So what was the decision? They're deciding to go for it. And they're gonna hand off on the option and Sadie cannot fight his way in to the end zone. Notre Dame gets the stop. So what did they do at the one yard line? Estime gets past the defenders, almost had a safety there. Instead, it's second and five. And on the motion, it's a sweep. And Salerno is going to get past all the defenders. And absolutely no one is going to be able to catch him. Notre Dame was down at the half-yard line, their own half-yard line, and puts in a massive touchdown, which is an absolute momentum killer against Temple. He just got past the defense, and after that, there was no one, absolutely no one, to stop him. So how does Temple respond? Well, Norwood's going to take this kickoff out. With a nice cut, he's got some open grass on the left side of the field. Eventually, he's going to get taken down just short of midfield. So Temple, great field position. Now a drop back on second and 12. Warner will take a massive sack, losing 10-11, and they end up kicking the field goal, which is short. So Temple is not doing so hot. Notre Dame has good field position to start, and Drew Pine is going to make it even better as Michael Mayer takes a shot on that catch. Nonetheless, Drew Pine is going to go to his left and find Styles for a Notre Dame touchdown to put them up by two touchdowns. Temple looking absolutely lost right now despite having such a good start, just have not been able to capitalize and Notre Dame has been able to. But Temple is not content to be done because that's a massive catch by Anderson and a great throw by Warner in the face of pressure. Then on second and goal, Warner's going to throw it to his left and find Anderson again, this time for a touchdown. Temple is finally on the board, and that defender right there just got completely lost, didn't know what to do. And that will be halftime, 14-7 Notre Dame lead. Will they be able to keep this lead in the second half? Well, they start off with the ball. That helps. We're going to start with a Drew Pine keeper down in Temple territory, and a good cut almost got him to the end zone. Great last minute tackle, but would it do anything? No, because Drew Pine is going to shake off a defender and walk into the end zone right there. And Notre Dame reclaims their two score lead. But Anderson, man, Temple really loves the special teams because Notre Dame is not doing so hot. This time, Temple's going to start on the Notre Dame side of the field, and Warner's going to roll out for his life, and eventually is going to find Sanders for a Temple first down. Third down and eight, Warner drops back, and he finds Barbone again, putting them in a goal-to-go situation, and Temple on second goal. This time, they will punch it in with Darvon Hubbard, and Temple is once again within a score. The Owls will not go away. The Irish have got nothing on these guys. That ends the third quarter 21-14. Notre Dame hold on against the unranked American Conference Owls. Well, on third down and nine, screen pass goes nowhere, and they're going to punt it back. But man, that is a mistake punting to Temple because they have dynamic special teams, apparently, because Notre Dame just can't do anything. Perhaps it's a Notre Dame deficiency. Maybe it's a Temple Excel. I don't know. But it works for Temple, and they're going to start with an I formation play action, and Warner is going to find a wide open Smith who goes all the way down to the 15-yard line. Temple, third down and seven. It's four down territory. Don't need all four because, once again, Warner finds the smallest hole to get Ahmad Anderson. And with first and goal, Temple is going to tie this game up at 21 apiece. Temple, who is down by 14 at multiple points in this game, is now tied with the Irish. 
but do not go away. Four minutes is plenty of time for any offense, and that is a good pitch and broken tackle by Tyree. Absolutely just annihilated the defender. Notre Dame driving second and 15, long ways to go, but Drew Pine is going to find Merriweather over the middle. That right there is Irish field goal range. Temple now just trying to hold them, but another first down for Notre Dame. Temple is going to have to start using their timeouts if they want to stay in this. Now on third down and goal, Pine, they just need to run clock. Instead, he runs it into the ground, and Notre Dame will kick a field goal, leaving a minute on the clock. Now can Temple go all the way and take the lead and the upset? Well, that's a pretty good start with a diving catch by Jose Barbone doing absolute wonders today. Now Warner on first down and 10 finds Anderson to the side and that will be another Temple first down. And then on this play right here, Jose Barbone gets the catch, but he shakes off the defender and runs free into the end zone. What a manly play. And Warner has had a field day today, 18 for 21, 341 yards, multiple touchdowns. But how about Barbone? It's a simple curl, but he breaks off the defender and that one, barring a miracle, could be the dagger. Notre Dame, final play. They have to go for the Hail Mary. You know they do. Drew Pine is going to unleash this one. And that one is caught by Styles, but he's 12 yards short. And Temple pulls off the upset against number five, Notre Dame. Stats on the day. Drew Pine didn't do bad. 11 for 14, 220 yards, a touchdown on the ground. It was all Matt Salerno, of course, that one 94-yard touchdown. But Drew Pine also did get that manly touchdown run. Receiving was good, only a touchdown by Lorenzo Styles. And for defense, it was Riley Mills with three tackles for loss, all of them sacks. Great game for him, but ultimately, it wasn't enough. And if Notre Dame's feeling bad, don't be. Because number six, Texas A&M, also lost to an unranked group of five. And Missouri lost to FCS. Yes, the elite schools that are Missouri and Texas A&M. You know that they're so good. And you look at that, Temple only had 30 rush yards, but they didn't need it. They got all they needed, and Notre Dame takes the L. Next time, Notre Dame will have to face the Michigan Wolverines on the road in the big house. So that's not quite the friendliest territory, but we'll see how Notre Dame does. In the next episode, we shall show which slider gets boosted for Notre Dame. Until then, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and have a nice day.